What I am gonna do though, as I'm trying to get uh, this off of me. And Welcome to another video. My name is Kenna and I'm so excited to have you here with me today. Today we're going to be doing some cozy relaxing plant chores and I'm probably going to make this video a lot of like overlay music um, for two reasons. One, my air conditioner is kind of on the fritz this week so that really loud roaring you guys hear that's my air conditioner and it's been doing that so I don't think it's going to stop um, and I don't want to the sound quality of this video would be all messed up. Um, that and two, the very, very sweet, adorable little corgi man busted my lip yesterday. Um, I sat down to film and he hopped in my lap and headbutted me right in the face and my lip is busted. So it actually really hurts to talk. So I'm gonna try to keep um, the talking to a minimum. I am gonna go over just a couple of repots that were left over from my last plant chores video, which I will link up here for you guys in case you missed it. Uh, and I just wanna make sure that you know the things that I wanted to get done in that video are gonna get done. And then I'm gonna get through some plant chores. So if you like this kind of video, leave me a thumbs up and let's get into it. Okay, so I know I said it in the opening clip, but I wanna apologize again in advance for the noise my air conditioner is making. I know it is probably very irritating, but I did want to talk just a little bit through the process of this plant. So this is my Anthurium Regal, and if you guys remember, I did actually unbox this one recently. This was a recent, or recent acquisition, and it did okay. Um, it's browning a little bit at the edges, and I could see through the glass vessel that I have that the roots were rotting, um, which is really not what you want. And when I unpotted it, there is actually some new root growth. And I'm not actually that worried about it now that I've seen that because that new root growth right there does look pretty nice. There's like those little white fuzzy tips. Um, so that's really reassuring actually, as far as this plant is concerned, because that tells me that it is capable of pushing out new growth. The roots weren't you know, too terrible off and it did actually like the substrate that it was in. The only problem is now all of those super long roots that it had, because it had like a really long root system, are now really trimmed back because I did have to trim back quite a bit of this uh, root system actually. Um, I trimmed off almost all of the secondary roots. A lot of it, all that's left is really just primary roots. And I did actually have to cut off some primary roots as well that had rotted out. So because of that, this was the vessel that I had it in. And there is a Leca Reservoir. I am tempted to leave it in this vessel because I do want that reservoir and I do want to give uh, this plant enough space for like these roots to root in. So I think actually that's what I'm gonna do. I was thinking about moving it to a, maybe a smaller vessel but I think this is gonna be okay. So that's probably what I'm gonna end up doing is leaving it in that vessel. And then I do have this mix here. Um, there's no dead roots in here, I did check. This is just the perlite and, uh, not like a pond, there we go, perlite and pond. So this is a perlite and pond mixture and I really do wanna grow my Ethereum in pond if I can. So that's what I'm planning on doing is just reusing this because it is a fairly new mix and it doesn't have like anything in there that I'm really worried about. And because it was growing, I'm not, again, too terribly worried about it. What I am gonna do though is add oh. myco. So usually I water in my plants, uh, my new transplants with myco, but this one, I think I actually wanna try adding it to the substrate itself. And usually you add it around the roots. So this is, about the level that I'm looking at. I might want to maybe put a little bit more in there. So you just another handful of the perlite and pond mix. There we go. Give it a nice amount of the substrate to grow down into. Yeah, that'll be good. And then I'll make sure here. 
So it looks like for a one gallon pot, you would use one teaspoon. So definitely not a one gallon pot here. This is maybe like a pint. So I'm just gonna do, <laughs> the Corgi is playing with a new bone in the background. Uh, don't mind him. I'm gonna do maybe a couple of pinches of Myco, like right onto the substrate there. There we go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add the Anthurium back in. And whenever I see something going on with my leaves that looks like this, which is an indicator of rot, or when I see rot, um, I do want to keep a close eye on that plant um, because if your roots are just sitting in there rotting and it's not actually throwing out any new roots, um, you, you're going to have a pretty big problem. Uh, your plant is going to end up being super unhealthy, possibly even dying. Um, and I do want to obviously avoid having any of my plants die when I can. So I did go ahead and unpot this one yesterday. I did have it actually sitting after I trimmed it all up in a mixture of water and hydrogen peroxide. I put probably a cup of water to maybe a tablespoon or two of hydrogen peroxide um, just to kill off any of the bacteria that were causing that rot. Root rot can be transmissible. It can also um, be caused by bacteria. So I don't want to keep those bacteria on the roots. And again, I'm not super worried about this perlite um, or this uh, perlite and pond mixture because I do know that this is a fairly fresh uh, mix and also that it was growing in this. So like, I don't feel like this is gonna cause too much of a problem. Um, there are some people who would probably change it out, but I'm not going to. And actually, I must not have had this buried very deep last time, or maybe the roots were taking up a lot more mass or like a lot more of the space. Um, but there is actually a good amount of this root on the back exposed. And I think you guys can probably see that. I don't want to leave it exposed. I do actually want to go ahead and add a little bit more of the substrate in there. So I'm going to go ahead and mix that up and I'll be right back. Okay, so I did go ahead and mix up a little bit more here, as you can see. And this mix is about equal parts pond and perlite. And the reason that I mix in perlite, aside from the fact that it does make the pond go a little bit further, is actually because uh, pond itself is a fairly heavy substrate. Um, so especially like finer root plants are gonna have maybe a little bit more trouble in it. Um, it it's going to be a little bit more weighty on top of those roots. And while yes, you know, plants are very resilient a lot of the time, even though they tend to die in people's care as house plants a lot, um, they still, you know, would probably prefer a little bit of a lighter substrate. So that's why you mix in the perlite because it does give it a little bit more of a lightness to it since perlite is so heavy. So it just kind of evens out that pond density. And I did go ahead and rinse it outside as well. And it might be a little bit lighter than the substrate underneath, but I think it'll be just fine. All right. Perfect. I made a little bit too much, but I'm gonna use it eventually, so that's fine with me too. But this is my newly repotted, again, Regale, and I am gonna go ahead and water it. And I also did leave, did not put the roots up against the thing, but I did leave a good amount of space. I wanna say that's probably where the roots are. Um, that way I can have a reservoir, because I do want a reservoir on this plant. I know that they can be a little bit picky, um, if they do end up getting dried out. So in order to prevent that, I have obviously left a reservoir at the bottom, but I also gave it a little bit of space between where the roots are and where the uh, top of the substrate is at the bottom here, or I guess the bottom of the substrate. That way it can have a little bit of a kind of a water layer 
And I think that's good. Looks like the water layer is sitting about right there, which is below the roots. Okay, so that is this regale done. And I think it's gonna be a lot happier now, hopefully, <laughs> now that those rotting roots are out of there. And because I do know that those new fresh roots were already growing in this substrate, I feel a little bit better about that, honestly. And I did give it some myco directly on the roots or directly where the roots are. So I feel like that's gonna make it a little bit happier as well. But I'm just gonna keep an eye on it, make sure that everything looks good over the next couple of weeks or so. Um, I know that there are some people who have their plants like start growing almost immediately in pond. I haven't yet had that be the case, honestly. Um, while my fuzzy petiole did start rooting probably in a couple weeks, I would not say that it was like the next day or overnight. And maybe it's just that they're not the most vigorous growers, but I've seen some people talk about that. So I just want to say that's not been my experience, though I will say I've also really liked pond so far. So we shall see. I am really excited to kind of have more plants in pond. Right now it's just two Inferium and my fuzzy petiole, I believe, that are in pond. Though I am wanting and thinking about moving one of my uh, alocasia over. So let me know if you guys would like to see that experiment because I am really curious to see what would happen. Okay, so I've run into a bit of an issue that I wasn't uh, expecting, and that is that I no longer have any more of these pools. Um, I thought that I had a few more of them somewhere. Um, apparently I do not. <laughs> So I'm faced with a choice. The first one is I could use one of the poles I used last uh, video to extend it. And I really, I don't want to do that. I just don't think that it'll look very good. And I think that it probably just is not the best choice. Um, and I do have one of those left. The other choice, and this is the one that I'm kind of leaning towards, is actually to go ahead and chop her. Um, and I was thinking about doing this for a while. Uh, I think I mentioned that to you guys because you know, she has a little bit of sunburn damage, a little bit of spider mite damage. Um, and while she is a absolutely gorgeous plant, you know, she just, she's, she's had a couple struggles, but this most recent leaf here is absolutely gorgeous and also huge. So it looks <laughs> completely disconnected from the rest of the plant. And, you know, she does have a good amount of roots actually growing into this pole. So I do know that if I cut her, you know, she would have a root system to kind of fall back on. I'm not starting from scratch with a uh, cutting. Um, so I'm really tempted to do that. That's kind of a bigger chore than I was planning on taking on. Um, but I think it's probably going to be the best option for her. And I think she'll ultimately be happier being chopped and, you know, repotted than she would have been uh, being, you know, just extended. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do it. Um, <laughs> I am a little bit nervous. I have not chopped this plant before and it was a gift and it's actually one of my favorite plants in my entire collection. So it means a lot to me both from sentimentality, but also just from pure, you know, pretty like I really like this plant so I'm gonna be really careful and I know that there are at least one two nodes that one's not rooted yeah so there's at least these two nodes rooted in which is kind of interesting because there is a good root system in here so I thought it was gonna come from this it must be coming down from this one um, so what I think I'm gonna do is maybe cut it back to here let her throw out some new growth points and then pot up this as a cutting, take off this leaf and pot up this as a cutting. I think that's going to end up being my best plan. Um, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and clean my uh, snips real quick. I need to get some alcohol wipes and let's get to cutting. Okay, so I did go ahead and get my snips clean. It is important to clean your snips or your uh, scissors or whatever it is that you're using buds <laughs> whatever it is that you're using to cut your plants um because there are a lot of things that are communicable between plants i mentioned them earlier root rot if you cut a plant that's healthy after cutting a plant that has root rot you risk transmitting that rot 
and I don't want to do that and I know the last thing I was cutting did have rot so I actually just use these isopropyl alcohol wipes and I give my snips or my scissors or my clippers a good wipe down before moving on to the next plant so I am gonna go ahead and cut there I did not realize that was gonna fall over I probably should have but I didn't think about it so let me go ahead and clip her back on there we go she's just clipped on there so then these are being held on there purely by the roots um, I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna get this one out what I think I'm gonna do though is undo the top Ooh, good grief. undo like the top uh, plastic portion of this pole like un unmake the pole essentially um, and then pull the moss away from the roots and then pull the roots through the front and that's my plan anyways i would like to not damage anything if i could including the pole because i do want to reuse this pole at some point and obviously the current plant is still on it so okay. actually i don't know that that's gonna work um let's just go ahead and no Ugh, I'm so conflicted. I don't want to dump out like this whole pot because I know that this plant is like rooted in there and it's happy. So like, I don't want to interfere with that. Oh, there we go. Okay, that might be enough. Oh, it actually ripped a little bit. That's fine. So just gotta be careful. I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling some of this moss out. And I might actually make the second cuts now. So the first one is gonna be here. So this is the root, rooted portion. So like just right here, I think will be fine. And then this is the other portion that's rooted in. Okay. See, there's like literally two nodes that are outside of this hole here. And that's a good amount of pole uh, extra pole growth. <laughs> so I'm just going to carefully, like I said, peel this moss away while trying to locate the roots. And I can see some of the roots uh, on the outside. So I have a decent idea, I think, of where they're going to be. Yeah, there's definitely some roots right there. I have that philodendron smell now uh, kind of coming at me from where I cut. If you guys have ever propped a philodendron, you probably know what that smells like. That's almost kind of spicy, which is kind of cool. Okay, so it goes down a little bit further down here. Oh man, this thing really rooted in. That's so cool to see, I will say, even though it's kind of... Uh, tedious right now because it lets me know that you know my moss poles are making my plants really happy you know they are rooting into them they are using them the way that i want them to and obviously like with this significant upsize here from one leaf to the next like i can tell this moss pole has made a huge difference in this plant's growth so as a plant parent, like that just kind of is a really good sign to me, but it's also just really cool to actually get to see. Okay, so this root, wow, this root goes all the way down. Oh my goodness. Okay, um, change in plan because that root goes down way further than I realized. I'm gonna have to take this whole pole apart which means this is going to get messier than I really thought it was going to be today. <laughs> no buds. And this plant is a varicosum cross, and I think I told you guys my varicosum did not make it, which I am really sad about. Um, but it's interesting to me that the cross is so hardy and like such a fast grow. I mean, look at this. Look at these roots that you can see. It just, it took right over uh, that 
Ooh, careful with that leaf because it's still a little bit soft. There we go. Um, but it took right over it and just took off in that substrate. That's so cool to see. Oh man, I'm trying not to cause damage to the upper leaves, but I also have to get it apart. Okay. Okay, that method seemed to have worked, sort of. That's the one problem with these molecules is they do not come apart super easy, even though they go together pretty well. And that's a good thing when they're, you know, holding your plant up. Uh, it's not so great when you're trying to get your plant out, I will say. Oh, man. Okay. Wow, these roots are just... I hope you guys can see how rooted that plant is. Sorry, I'm trying not to get soil everywhere today. Those roots though, just are so happy. And I love to see that. Okay. All right, so that is those out. Now it's time to see if I can separate. Okay. I did not realize this was going to be such a task, but I am overheating already. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's a root there. And that goes all the way down. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I did not realize quite how it, it goes all the way down to the soil. It rooted from the top all the way down into the soil. Wow. I did not anticipate that, I will say. I thought it was just gonna be kind of like localized rooting. No, <laughs> definitely not localized. Definitely very spread out. Wow, that is so cool to see. I Actually, let me get you guys, I think, a better view. I do film on my phone, so you're going to lose my view for a second, but I just want you to see kind of what I'm dealing with. So I do apologize for the sound quality in this bit and probably for the shaking as well, but this root and this root, these two roots, both came from this top node up here that is rooted in. That is just absolutely wild, you guys. I did not anticipate this being such a project. I thought this was gonna be so much simpler and I'm happy about it, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm, I'm so excited that this plant has a good enough root system that it's gonna be you know, a substantial plant all by itself, but just, wow. Sorry, I'm trying to like detangle one-handed now. This lets me know that this is gonna be, like this uh, taking plants off of moss poles is gonna be a little bit more of a task than I ever really realized. So I thought it was gonna be easy. Oh man. Yeah, I was wrong, wow. This is so cool. I think I'm gonna try to set you guys up so maybe you can see this as I'm trying to untangle it. Maybe I'll time lapse it or something. Um, but I want you guys to be able to see just how wild this is. All right, give me one second. Okay, so I think that's gonna be a good angle for you guys, I hope, to be able to see as I de detangle this. I can't even explain to you the uh, situation the tripod is in right now. It's being held up by a water sprayer. It's a little bit uh, sketchy, but it'll be fine. So this is long fiber spag moss, which is usually a little bit easier to detangle than short fiber. Um, just by its nature, it's kind of doesn't fall apart quite as easily, which is good. <laughs> um, unintentionally good, I guess, because I wasn't expecting this to be an issue. But again, what a great issue to have, honestly. 
and I'm just carefully kind of teasing this moss away. And I did water yesterday this pole, um, so this pole is gonna have a little bit of dampness to it, which does also help um, when you're trying to detangle something like this. And actually, I think this, yeah, this one seems like it's coming from the second cutting that I took. So this is all, okay, actually, this is maybe a little bit shorter than I thought it was. I think the other ones were coming from the other cutting. But still, like, this is a pretty nice root system for having been on this pole for such a short time or, like, with having had that, um, like, ability to grow into this pole for such a short time because it's also a newer node. Like, this is the root system that this plant already has. I'm going to try to detach it instead of pull it through. Yeah. So that is this root system. As you can see, it's small, but it is there, which is awesome. It's really gonna help me out a lot. And then this is a comparison. So this is the most recent leaf here. It's still a little bit soft, not quite hardened off. And this is the leaf before that. So a huge jump in the size of the leaf that I can pretty much attribute entirely to the fact that this pole has given it more support and has given uh, more ability for rooting for those nutrients. So that is super cool to see. I'm so happy um, that I did this actually. And I am hoping that it will get situated before this new leaf decides to come out, though I do expect that one to still be smaller. I'm probably gonna have to get this one back on a moss pole too. I'm kind of thinking about maybe potting these back together. It's not a terrible idea. And just cutting off this leaf because it is, you know, a little bit damaged just from the spider mites and everything. So that's this little tiny leaf at the bottom. It was a little damaged from burn and spider mites and just all sorts of other stuff going on. And now that cutting looks so much better. I'm so excited. So that's one. And then the second cutting is the one that has all of these crazy roots then I guess which makes a little bit more sense because this did have a little bit more time than the other one to root in. So I'm just kind of, I don't know how to describe this motion, but like teasing underneath and then just pulling off gently with this moss. And that seems to be working pretty well to get that moss off of the roots. And remember, I'm just trying to get enough off that I can pull it through that hole um, and get this little cutting off the pole. I almost feel like this root system is better developed than like the main plant was, which is so funny. And like such a great problem to have. Again, like what a great coincidence that was. Oh wow, there's another hole. All right, I'm gonna have to set that back down again. Cause look at this, I found another huge root in there. So that's three huge primary roots that went all the way down to the bottom of this pole and into the pot. All right, that seems to be about as clean as I think I'm gonna be able to get them. So they are going through two separate holes, which also helps. Aha, and there we go. That is this super developed root system on this one tiny little cutting. So I'm hoping that this will put out a lot of new growth soon. And I actually don't even know what to do with all of these roots. Like what kind of pot am I gonna put this in? But this is really cool to see. I, again, I'm really, really happy um, that this plant took off so well in this pole. And it definitely leaves me curious like what my other poles look like now um, since they've been on poles like even longer than this one, so. Really cool to see, love that. So that's cutting number two. And then I'm just gonna try to separate this moss over from the soil. I don't want to mix soil into my moss or no, moss into my soil, there we go. Um, just cause it can cause, like I think I mentioned before, water retention issues where your soil stays damp for too long. And that's not usually good for your roots, it can cause root rot problems. All 
I think that's probably as good as I'm gonna get for keeping them separate. So this is the root system of the mother plant. And as you can see here, like she does actually look really nice. Um, not actually as developed as I thought that she was, interestingly. Um, I thought that some of the roots that were from the cuttings were from her. Um, so kind of interesting to see that. I'm just pulling some of like this initial like pod dry soil off of her here. Just because I really don't like that soil they use for soil pods for little plantlets. But she has like a good little root system going. Um, probably would be better if I kept up on watering her a little bit more. But it seems happy enough. So I'm actually going to pot her, I think, back in here with the really, really big cutting. Yeah. Just a handful of soil. And let me go ahead and actually close this pole back up. Let me know if you guys like this view. Um, I've never <laughs> filmed, I think, in this view before, but I know that it's probably a little bit easier for you guys to see what's going on. There we go. A little bit of this uh, plastic layer was still stuck on that one. There we go. That one's in. Three more. Yeah, part of the air conditioner being on the fritz, by the way, is that my house is not as cool as it normally is. And I really, really, really like my house a little bit cooler than this. So I am quite toasty. There we go. All right, so that can pop back in there. Perfect. I'm kind of tempted to take this leaf off too because it's not in like the best condition. Maybe I'll like chop here and make a wet stick out of it. That'll be interesting to see. I'm not usually terribly good with wet sticks so like having something to kind of experiment on wouldn't be the worst. And now that I know I have so many of this plant I'm not as worried that something's gonna happen. But this leaf you know was so pretty and then it got burned so that's kind of a shame I will say but I think it'll be okay. So this plant, the mother plant now has two leaves left. This one is yellowing a little bit, but I think it'll be fine. Um, I am gonna let it kind of pop down a little bit. There we go. Okay. And then get the larger of the two cuttings in here. And again, this is the root system on this cutting. So not like super huge or anything, but I think enough that it will be just fine being potted in here. Actually, yeah, there we go. So I do need to make sure that this can go up against the pole, since obviously it's already accustomed to the pole and it's been growing on a pole. It really does need that support. So I'm trying to finagle this around. That way the roots are in the soil. There we go. Okay, so I think that will work. Yeah, that should work. And then this one will go just off to the side. Yeah, perfect, okay. So then I'm gonna start backfilling with the soil here. No, guys. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and clip this guy. There we go. That way I don't have to worry about it falling over. And maybe pop this guy back over here. So I don't want them to shift while I'm filling the soil in. There we go. There we go. Perfect.
And also in case anyone's wondering, this is why I love potting mats because I make such a disaster whenever I'm repotting. I don't know why for whatever reason, I'm just not capable of not making a mess. And it drives Chris up the wall whenever he comes in and there's like soil all over the counter or the you know, floors or things like that. So this potting mat really makes a huge difference. If you don't have one, I would 100% recommend getting one. I'm gonna just fill the pole with soil here because the pole, or this pole also has roots in it. And I don't want the soil to be sitting right up against spag. Because again, that'll cause uh, moisture retention issues. And I just don't really need that happening. Especially not some, one of my favorite plants. Okay, let's see how the soil looks. Okay, I definitely could use actually a little bit more. Not sure where the soil went or if maybe I just compacted it down a little bit more than I did before, but I don't think I took out enough of those chunks to cause this issue. Luckily though, I do have my soil bucket right here. There we go. Wow, that is dusty. Yeah, if you guys saw that puff of dust, it's because that soil is super dry as opposed to the soil that was in here that was a little bit damp. All right. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start filling again with that spag. And for anyone who's wondering, like this kind of pole, like the reason that this is so great is for exactly this type of situation where you know, your, your plant is ready to be propagated or you want to go ahead and propagate your plant, but you're running into an issue where like there's no root system and you don't want to lose growth. This is going to help prevent that loss of growth that could happen otherwise, because this plant already has a root system. It's already ready to go essentially, which is a huge improvement from, you know, having to chop and then prop and wait for that root system to grow. So that's really cool. And it gives me a lot more confidence just as a plant parent that nothing's going to happen to the plants that I, you know, most value and most treasure like this one. Okay. And I'm just using this chopstick through the hole there to kind of pack down that moss. That way it's actually going to be in contact with the growth points, which is really important. And it's hard to get in there otherwise. And then just kind of keep going. Okay, so now that that uh, unexpected chore is complete, and I did go ahead and water this one, as you guys saw, it's draining, awesome. Um, now it is time to deal with this. And I'm really conflicted. I know that some people would probably cut uh, this back and maybe you know make the roots a little bit shorter. Um, I really, really don't wanna do that. Uh, I really. I am so proud of how many roots this little plant has put out and how well it has done. You know, I want to give it a good shot. Um, but it's also a lot of roots for such a small little plant. And you know, I was thinking about putting it in this, but like even this would be a little small. So I think I am going to end up cutting these roots just a little bit shorter just because it doesn't need this many roots you know for this small of a plant and you know it's going to be too big for this little container so 
I think I'm gonna go ahead and just make the cut. Today's all about making cuts. So that's those off. And I mean, even with those off, look how much root this little plant still has. Like it is doing it so great. And I am gonna go ahead and pop it into here um, just until it starts showing some growth. After that, I don't know what I'll do with it. I might sell it maybe. Um, anyways, but I don't know what I'll do with it. I might sell it. Um, I've never sold plants before, but you know, I don't really need so many duplicates or duplicates of a plant in my collection. I mean, I now have two in there, one here, one that I'm gonna be rooting up. And I think that's just <laughs> probably enough of that one plant, even though it is a plant that I really love. So I might go ahead and kind of tip my, or dip my toe into the world of selling for this little majestic. Um, but after it does have a growth point, I don't wanna, you know, give it out until then. I just wanna make sure that it does okay. So let me go ahead, reach down here and grab my soil vinegar. And ooh, that'll work really nicely. I'm gonna use this little cup as a scoop. I still have not invested uh, to no one's shock in a soil scoop, even though I probably really should. Um, it would probably help me out a lot, but just haven't done it. I'm trying to kind of situate these roots in here in a way that they'll all fit. There we go. I think that'll work. And like, even this is probably a little bit small for it, but since it is such like a small plant, I don't want to give it a huge pot um, to try to, you know, make space for all these roots that the plant doesn't really need yet. So I am going to try to stick with this if I can. And this is just my normal aeroid mix. It has a little bit of bark, perlite, um, and just like soil in there, as well as like some charcoal. It's just like an orchid mix, essentially. Uh, let me go ahead. I do like to water into bowls. Uh, if you guys haven't seen the way that I water before, I know it can be a little bit weird. Um, and I have had a lot of people say like, oh, it's gonna spread pests between your plants. Honestly, I usually water with a pesticide, um, SNS 209, so I'm not particularly worried about it. And if it does, you know, I have beneficial bugs as well that aren't affected by that pesticide because it is um, natural, but also it is one that's caused when they eat it. So I think this will be fine. Um, it is actually not wanting to soak in though, so I'm gonna just let it chill there. For hydrophobic soil, this is honestly like the best thing that I have found is just letting it sit in water, watering it over the top and just letting it sit. Um, and that tends to work really well for me. Okay, and then last but not least is this little guy. So this I think would technically be considered a, just a normal um, crop or just a normal like one leaf cutting, one leaf, one node. And I actually do see the growth point over here um, once I take off that petiolar sheath that was left over. Um, yeah, so I think this will be okay. It has lots of like little growth points for roots. I'm just gonna go ahead and maybe chop this a bit shorter. I don't like to have super long uh, stems on my cuttings, even though like it can help to stabilize a little bit, which is why I have left a little bit of the cutting. I don't want it to be um, something where it you know, kind of gets in the way of putting it into a pot or a container. I'm trying to think of how I want to root this one. Normally I would root philodendrons in perlite. Um, I just personally really like perlite. I think it does a great job and it's not quite so difficult as spag is, but considering this will probably be another one that I'll sell if I do end up selling, <coughs> I think spag might be the way to go. So I am gonna go ahead, and this is just some spag that I have that is dry, um, but I did actually, there we go. I did actually dampen some spag in anticipation of uh, extending that pole for that 
original mother plant majestic that I chopped. So I'm just gonna go ahead and work that dry spag into the damp spag. Um, this is pretty damp actually. Like I can squeeze some water out of this, which is a little bit wetter than you really want it for propping. You really only want it damp for props. Um, because when it's really, really dry, it can actually, or when it's really, really wet, I mean, it can cause rot problems. So I'm going to go ahead, actually, I'm going to probably do a method, kind of a similar method anyways, to what uh, the plant dealer does with theirs. I really, really liked the way that their props uh, did. So I'm going to go ahead and that's the growth point. I'm going to try to see if I can get that facing up, but then go ahead and pack the spag around it. There we go. So the top of the prop is sticking out. There we go. No. Sorry, this might seem like I'm being picky, but I don't want to pack it down because packing it down, um, especially for damp spag, like I just feel like that's going to cause a lot of issues. So I'm being picky, but it is with good reason. But I also want it to keep stabilized. So I'm trying to kind of meet that perfect middle here. Okay. So that is surrounding it, the node. And there we go. That is that little prop. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on this because, and anyone who's ever used bag can tell you, bag dries out super fast. Um, it can be like a huge issue for props because your props might die if their spag dries out and they don't have any water for a good amount of time. And that good amount of time can be like four days. So I'm gonna keep a close eye on this one just to make sure that it's doing well. But I am gonna give this kind of propping method a go. Like I feel like this is gonna be a good prop method um, for any plants that you don't plan to keep. Spag is, you know, not cheap, but it's inexpensive-ish enough and accessible enough that I feel like shipping in spag is a good reasonable option. Whereas obviously shipping in perlite would be a little bit uh, much. <laughs> so I'm gonna give this a go. I think this is gonna be a really cute little prop and I'm really excited to see how long it takes this growth point to pop out because so far this plant has been a super fast grower for me. Um, so I'm, I've never rooted it though. So I'm interested to see what happens. Okay, so I do not have much time left. I do have to go to work tonight. Um, but I want to go ahead and just kind of update you guys on how some of the props or the products from last week are doing. So this is the first one and I still am totally in love with this plant. If you guys aren't familiar, this is my Monstera Adansonii Mint, um, a plant that I did not expect to love and yet find myself absolutely loving anyways. So that's really cool. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just water these because it has been about a week since they were watered and they do need a little drink. And even though nothing's growing into the moss yet, I still am just watering the moss a bit. It's not going to probably take a lot, but I want it to at least get dampened just to try to prevent nightmares later on. That's one. And then I'm just going to pour this into this one. I do like to try to reuse my water when I know it's not, you know, a problem or anything growing or anything doing weird in that water. But all of these are looking really great. This one, as you can see, is about to unfurl that new leaf and I can see some mint on there. I'm not sure how much it's going to have yet, um, but I am really excited to kind of see where it goes. So stay tuned. I will definitely post photos of that one um, on Instagram when it gets unfurled. If you guys don't mind me posting the same plants so frequently, but I'm just watering essentially through the moss pole. So I'm watering in the moss pole and down, and that's going to actually water the soil as well. And I'm just popping a little extra water on the soil just to be sure. I know these guys were thirsty, so I want to make sure that they get some water before I leave today. And then one last plant that's actually over in the same area, which is why I grabbed it, that I know needs water, is my El Choco Red. 
So sorry I didn't say the names of all these. I'm getting ahead of myself. This is my Ochoco Red. This is my Golden Violin. And this one, the small little guy over here is my uh, Epipremnum Panatum Golden Variegated. Um, and all of these I am just really excited about, to be quite honest with you. And my El Choco, I'm not sure what happened with this most recent leaf. It might just be changed in environments. I know definitely humidity was probably playing a factor. Um, it actually unfurled while I was gone. So I know that it probably didn't get the humidity that it wanted since I wasn't here filling up a humidifier for it. Um, but in addition to that, I think it's probably that it maybe dried out a little bit. So I'm trying to keep a better eye on it. It's in a really small pot actually though, and it has really chunky mix, so it's kind of hard to tell, but I am gonna try to be a little bit more careful about that one. But this actually turned into more of a project video than I anticipated, but I hope you guys still enjoyed it anyways. Um, I think that's gonna be about it for today though, because I do have to go in a couple minutes. So if you enjoyed this kind of video, leave me a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below. Uh, let me know what kind of videos you guys would like to see next. I do have a lot of chores to get done, but I know which chore videos aren't everyone's favorite. And if you guys like any of these plants or have any recommendations for these plants, uh, always let me know down below. I love to kind of talk plants with you guys. And there is a subscribe button down there as well. If you would like to see me around more often, I would love to see you guys around as well. But I think that's it for today. So thanks so much. Bye.